And welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for a special edition of 50 Friday today. Um, what we have been doing on Fridays is um, something that we call 50 Fridays, where I play some 50 lists from Magic Online. Today we're going to be, you know, still using the list from online, but we're going to be playing some uh, of the unique lists from the Mythic Championship this weekend. So that's what we're doing here today on 50 Friday. Um, so we got three decks that we're playing: Sultai Ramp, Azorius Control, and Five Color Fires. Um, the we're only doing three decks here today because I got started late because I got a brand new router and modem. Um, hopefully that helps some of the lag issues. As y'all know, I I'm getting a new com like I got all the parts of the new computer except for the computer case, which is coming on Tuesday, and so we'll we'll uh, put that together and then hopefully with the new motor modem and router and new computer hopefully that gets rid of all of the internet and computer issues and there'll be no more lag that would be awesome but hopefully you know let me know um even those of y'all on youtube let me know if this makes any difference at all um you know got rid of the really crappy two-in-one modem and router that cox cable gave me like over two years ago and got you know separate and um really good router and modem Hopefully it makes a big difference. Anyway, all right, our first deck here, Soltai Ramp. This is Luis Salvato's deck. Um, you may remember if you were watching about a week, week and a half ago um, or so, we played against Luis Salvato like twice um, over in Ranked, and he was using this deck, um, like the same stream with two different decks. We played against him twice, and the deck looked really, really interesting, you know, just getting a whole lot of mana um, with... Just our mana creatures, growth spiral, circuitous route is awesome. So you're just ramping up, and then you're just ramping into just using casualties of war for your interaction, and then big hydroid crisis and Gadwick to draw lots more cards. And then you get to ramp some more and draw lots more cards and so on. And then eventually just kill your opponent with a big hydroid crisis. That's kind of just the goal of the deck. Pretty straightforward, but it it looked pretty sweet. So let's let's give this one a try. Now that we got the full 75 deck list. <clears throat> I love the finality of Eternity in, in the board whenever you're ramping a bunch. You know, you can maybe get to that Exus 10. Now, it's also, like, with that being said, the Exus 10 isn't super valuable because we don't have lots of great creatures to get back, but it's just pretty cool. Um, Yeah, we got brand new sleeves today. We got the story, the storybook sleeves or something. I got these off of eBay, for those of y'all watching on YouTube that just... Went to eBay. It was fourteen dollars for the code with all seven of them. Um, if you like the sleeves, if you're interested in getting those sleeves, all right, let's give it a try. Uh, with these decks, we're just going to play them in ranked because you know these are definitely good decks with from from the uh, Mythic Championship and everything. So we're going to try these over in ranked. We're going to play four matches with each deck, just because standard matches kind of take longer. So we'll be just playing four matches with each deck. And here we go. What's up, Meaty Ogre? Second month there with the subs. Thank you so much there, Ogre. I appreciate that. Hey, Ishikawa. <laughs> it's not quite... It's, it's not whoever goes first wins in standard right now. I wouldn't say that's really the case. All right, so we have we have good mana with three lands and four spells, yet we're going to mulligan. It's pretty unfortunate when you have that because we have just uh, top-end card, top-end card, top-end card, top-end card. You know, it's just four top-end cards. No ramp at all. We need some ramp. All right, we got some ramp here. So we have 27 lands in the deck, right? Yeah, so there's 27 lands as far as, like, keeping growth spiral, even though we don't have a lot of other land drops. Hmm. So I think it's either put back Growth Spiral, put back Nyssa, or put back Casualties. I think we keep Druid and Route, but I mean, honestly, I could maybe just put back Druid, but that's going to require me drawing a lot of lands. Maybe I'll put back Spiral, and we have turn two Druid, and we just got to draw one land, and then, then Route, and then go from there. We'll do that. Oh, I need to update our sub-goal. First of the day. Uh, 
All right, so Love Struck Beast, probably Golgari Adventures. That'd be my guess. Looking like a good guess. All right, let's see if we can find this circuitous route to victory. Go grab our Demir Gilgates. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. So I can go Nissa plus casualties, which I guess I do that. All right, so green, green, right? Can I do this? Yeah. I will protect the virtue of this world. Be wary of the ground you walk on. So destroy a land and a creature. We'll destroy the Regisaur and the forest. It's a pretty good turn four. Um oh I did not I did not or yeah, I did get the decks up on Stream Decker, didn't I? Yeah. These are the decks we're using today. Hey, Rex, good afternoon. Hey, Escurio. Unfortunately, I don't have anything, like, super cool to follow this up with. No Krasis or Gadwick yet. Rankle, that old prankster. Oh, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking very sharp today. No, I did not uh, increase the resolution of the webcam. I I got a brand new modem and router, and that's why it took me a while to get set up today. Because we were working on that. But we were working on that. I mean, it, it took me a couple hours to get it all set up. Technical difficulties, but it's finally all set up. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that also helps with it, you know, lag issues and everything. And that a combination of that and and new computer that we'll have that I'll build on Tuesday. We'll have them all go away. Hmm. No, I guess it's... I guess it's fine like this. Taps like all my black except for this Demir Gilgate. Route's not a terrible card to draw. I guess I am at nine. I mean, Route's better than a random card, but it's not as good as Crisis. I kind of feel like I just take it. Harness the elements. That's a good. That's yeah. That's that's a good. Uh, good thing there, Rex. Yep. Mm. 
All right, going for me. Crisis. Come on. So I think I need to bounce Rankle and then block Order of Midnight. Because if I bounce Order of Midnight and block Rankle... They just get their wrinkle back with their order of midnight. That was really good. All right, I have to use this thing now. So we're probably dead from them just killing stuff and attacking out now. All right, so it looks like the computer is still slowing down. Of course, we knew that there's a lot of computer problems, not just the router. Alright, so Massacre Girl, Legion's End. I 
don't like Brazen Borrower at all in this matchup. And not really too much, just kind of in general. They just don't really have things that we want to be bouncing. Um, Ether Gust, Disdainful Stroke, Epic Downfall, Finale of Eternity. These are all reasonable cards. But I don't want to water down our game plan too much. So I don't want to bring in everything. I think we'll go with the finale. Wouldn't mind some disdainful strokes though too. I just I've never really liked the whole mask play masker girl and play nissa plan you know like imagine if we would have drawn masker girl there like we'd still have just destroyed like all of our lands just never really liked that plan yeah i have all the the new parts for the new computer except for the case the case doesn't come till tuesday for some reason it got delayed But all the other, all the rest of the parts came in. Um, no, yeah, I I I went I went out today and purchased a new router and modem, you know, separate, and hooked it up and everything. So, because yeah, I, I was using the the combination router modem. Um, from the cable company that just did not work too well before. So big upgrade there. But it doesn't fix the problems with the computer, of course. So this time we do have the Krasis to go with our Nyssa. Just hopefully, hopefully they can't kill the Nyssa. Oh no, that's black mana. Oh no, Legion's End? I guess I should have done the Guild Gate. I didn't even really consider Legion's End. Well, that's unfortunate. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I, guess I shouldn't even play that. I should not even just play this forest. Let's do this for seven, but I probably should have just done this for six and then I played in a tap land like the watery grave here. I didn't really even think of Legion's End.
injured magnificent world. I probably just have enough forests anyway. The land shall conquer you. Keep these blue sources. Ugh. Just two love struck beasts and then all removal. That's a pretty good hand. Especially against what I had. Love struck beast just hits so hard. Seven. They have seven power in play. You need to be able to untap with with your Nissa before you play your Krasis. We were not able to. Lovestruck Beast. Too big, putting out six power into play on two bodies. Pretty good card there. Yeah, we got yeah, we got the new sleeves. I got them off eBay. They were fourteen dollars for the seven pack. They look pretty sweet. So far, they haven't helped too much, <laughs> but they looked sweet, so. I know, they kept murdering our forests. And our watery graves. So, of course, we're going to be leading with the Castle Vantress while that... Um, well, that's like a tap land right now. I got the the dragon just like dances afterwards. So happy. No blocks. <clears throat> I'd like to draw a circuitous route here. Yeah, they could definitely improve the yeah the sleeve UI. Yeah, they they could certainly improve that. Because yeah, when you when you do choose choose a sleeve for a deck, yeah, you have so much sleeves now. You got to just scroll, 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 scroll. Is the Orzhov Troll Knight playable and historic? I mean, it's certainly playable. I don't know if it would be good enough to see a lot of a lot of success or you know near as much success. It's 
really, you know, how can it handle, like, how can it handle Oko, I guess, is the, the thing. Oh, I'd mess this up. Sorry, I was just talking and messed this up. Uh, they're going to kill my incubation druid now. Darn it. Uh, I hate when I do that. My whole plan this turn, of course, is to adapt incubation druid. I mean, I obviously have to do that in response to the Mayhem Devil before the Mayhem Devil's in play. Make this thing 5 power. Or 5 toughness. I hate when I do that. Now I can't cast casualties, which was obviously my plan. No, you you don't get wild cards for the Twitch Prime loot if you already own all of them. You you do get um, you get progression towards um, progression towards uh, your vault. I think it's like eight percent towards the vault. I think I think somebody else said they got like eight percent towards the vault. Oh, you get gems too. Okay, so you get the gems also. Gosh. Man. Wish I would have just thrown this game away. That would have been nice. This was... We certainly would have been in a really good position whenever they played the Mayhem Devil if I would have just adapted the Incubation Druid right away. They would not have been able to kill the Incubation Druid. I play the Overgrown Tomb. My casualties, I destroy the Mayhem Devil and the Witch's Oven and a land. We would have been in prime position to win this. That's why that's why streaming is the hardest the hardest magic, though. Like You make the most, most mistakes when streaming because you're just distracted. It happens. Oh, you're not 100% sure? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you just got the Vault Progress. That's that's what I would have thought, is you just get Vault Progress. And they just have Lethal. You got the sleeves? Cool, cool. Oh no, you don't have to you don't have to apologize for distracting. I mean that that's it's my job. I just didn't do a very good job of my job there. Um None of these cards are very appealing. I feel like this is a pretty difficult deck to sideboard with. So obviously, epic downfall, massacre girl, finale, love struck beast, plain white celebration. Those are all average-ish cards. We go with the downfall since they're going up to cavaliers.
Like, am I supposed to play Love Struck Beast over Incubation Druids? Maybe. I'm gonna put him in here instead of the Tamiyo and the Incubation Druids. <laughs> I think I wanna put that over here. So obviously I think it's the Nissa or the Gadwick. I think we're supposed to keep both the Grow Spirals and try to ramp, but all this does is just kind of put some three threes out there and is is pretty vulnerable. Where this can just, you know, like refill hand. And I think refill hand is more valuable. Now, obviously we need to draw a blue source, but of course with the Nissa we need to draw multiple lands. Um, we kinda need multiple lands either way. Oh, thanks, Kalua King. Yeah, that's... I am sacrificing... Best plays I could I could make with uh, the chat interaction, but... Yeah, hopefully it's worth it overall. Okay, let's, let's cast this now, see if we draw Legion's End. No, wrong two mana, black, sorcery. I think how good a Legion's End would have been here. Oh, you're playing Priest of Forgotten Gods? Hmm. I wasn't really expecting that. So I could get rid of the, you know, like the swamp could could let other things come into play untapped. So like maybe I'm supposed to get rid of the swamp instead of the castle. But if this goes on to be a longer game, which is what our, our deck normally does, I think I kind of want to get rid of the um, castle. Oh, come on. Hmm. So obviously best case scenario is playing the Nissa first. Yeah, the eBay it was just sent during it was sent with an eBay message that the code uh took like 30 minutes to an hour. 4 5 6. And then the per the seller just sent me an eBay message with the code. So obviously playing Nissa first and untapping with Nissa and then playing Gadwick is best case scenario. But if I lead with Nissa and if they have Noxious Grasp and they like kill my Nissa or they have something that kills the land and then kills Nissa. I don't know, I kind of felt like just playing the Gadwick, drawing some cards and getting this Gadwick for defense here. These cauldron familiars are such a problem. So it's either do I do I take one damage or let them draw a card? Ugh. Why do I have to play Midnight Reaper?
So I'm down to three. They can attack, put me down to two. Um, yeah, it's possible it's worth it to play Leyline in the, in the sideboard. It's possible. I'm not loving this matchup on our side. We will not fail. Wow. Now is that three? With no cards in hand. Okay, so they are playing. That one card. Oh, Priest of Forgotten Gods. All right. So them being a priest deck, it does make me want to play Massacre Girl and Finale more. So I guess we'll do that. We'll play those two. And not these Lovestruck Beasts. So now do I want to play one Lovestruck Beast or a Plain White Celebration or a Tamiyo? I guess one Lovestruck Beast. <laughs> Star of Extinction was a sweet card. Use more of that. We did play against a pretty sweet... Um, historic Jund deck that had Fires of Invention to go along with Casualties of War and Star of Extinction and um, Sunbird's Invocation and Haphazard Bombardment. I liked it. And don't you hate having to mulligan four lands, three spells? But I feel like we're supposed to mulligan this. It's like perfect mana. And we'll keep it and we'll draw a ramp card. We gotta get a ramp card, but everything else is good besides not having a ramp card. See, that works out. Might as well, you know, like if we would have had our, our like, growth spiral or circuitous route for our, lamp, for our ramp card on turn one, they would have dressed it away. And now we don't have that. So now we can still draw into it. The problem is we're not doing the whole draw into it part of that, of our strategy. The good thing is my opponent is just kind of doing nothing. Yeah, they're kind of just doing absolutely nothing. They gotta have, like, Murderous Rider, Together, right? We, will we gotta just be chilling on removal. Be wary of the ground you walk on. No? What do they got? Why? What did they keep? That they had Swamp, Swamp, Mountain, and they can't cast stuff.
Awesome, Matt. Yeah, the Gruel Historic deck brought you to Mythic in two days. Good job. Celestial Mantle? Yeah, what what card? What is that card? Isn't that from, like, Zendikar? Like, wasn't that from original Zendikar? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that one's not on Arena. Hmm. We're an aggro deck now. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be a bad one to bring back, though. Chant creature gets... It's a six mana enchantment. Enchant creature gets plus three, plus three. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you get to double your life total. <laughs> yeah, saying you'd like it to be there. No, they didn't keep five lands in a dress because they, they didn't play a fourth land. You know, like, after their turn three, they didn't play more lands. So they know about the casualties. They could be, like, they could just be, like, sandbagging, like, witches' ovens and stuff like that. And waiting for me to play the casualties. That's possible. Oh well, I'll still play it. I could have, I guess I could have just not, I could guess I could have just played the Paradise Druid, attack with Massacre, they go to 10, and then they have this thing in play that does them a damage, and like wait to see if they play another thing, then finale the two things. I don't know, We I like destroying one of the swamps anyway. Okay, I think we're in a pretty good spot. I wonder what their hand looked like that they kept. You know, Swamp, Swamp, Mountain, Duress. What were the rest of the cards that were not... And then they drew a bunch of stuff. And that by turn four, with their Swamp, Swamp, Mountain, they didn't have another land, and they couldn't play any of, like, the five or six cards in their hand. I wonder what those cards look like. I guess they're Spawn of Mayhems, like, where they, the Spawn of Mayhem costs four. It's not actually a three-drop. If I was on the draw, I would have mulliganed this. But I'm going to try it on the play. We're going to draw Growth Spiral. Yeah, that was not a good draw. Hey, Triton. Thank you so much. That's the card I want. Oh, there it is. Nisa. Uh, 
Uh, good attack. I can't block. I see no interest for the Mythic Championships, like for myself. Um, I mean, for myself, I mean, I have. This is my full time job. I can't really take a day off. Especially with how I just took some days off. A little bit ago. Um, so now, do I, do I even want to lead with Nessa or do I want to lead with Circuitous Route? We'll give this a try. No, the lag lagging's on my end. It's my computer. You know, we're getting the new one. I'm putting it all together on Tuesday. Yeah, uh, oh, not not for tomorrow, League Nog, because tomorrow we're doing our Sub Battle Saturday stream. So Sub Battle Saturday is tomorrow where, where I'm going to be playing against subscribers all day. So Sub Battle stream is tomorrow. Um, uh, that's the problem with Nessa. Just all your lands die. That's not cool. I like my lands. Yep, yeah, so sun Sunday definitely open on Sunday. I have not been impressed with the, the Brazen Borrowers in our deck whatsoever. But I guess they're for the control matchup. Give you an instant speed threat against control. I think that's what it's for. Um, I think I'd just I'd rather just prefer some like regular um, removal instead of brazen or or counter magic, um, or
it's like removal or, or counter magic or just something that's that's kind of good against aggro, something to help stabilize. Um, life gain, sweeper. I, I don't know. I'd... Questing beast. I just play like some questing beasts. Questing beast is awesome. It's good against everything. I don't really want to bounce Cauldron Familiar, really. They're just going to keep on replaying Cauldron Familiar, though, aren't they? I guess I'm just dead. Yeah, I'm just dead. Yeah, these borrowers are just not worth a card. I guess these aren't the matchup for it, but I don't really know what is the matchup for it. I mean, if it was just like main deck Ether Gust, I don't know. Because basically the reason why is because this deck doesn't really make the the three mana three one part of this card doesn't really matter in this deck, and so it's basically just the one blue bounce something, and that's just not not worth a card. Seen plenty of good play out of borrower. I mean, maybe I mean against against these cauldron familiar decks and in a deck and in a in a ramp heavy deck like this. You can't bounce your own things. You can't bounce your own crisis. You are not allowed to do that. You know, I want to play this plain white celebration here. Yeah, it'd be a lot better if you could bounce your own things. But yeah, I think that for for like against other blue against other blue decks, they're good. I think it's basically a card for other matchups, but I'm just keep playing against I you know I've played against three aggro decks and they're just pretty bad against aggro thanks bonus factor yeah internet's back up it's going it's all working All right, this will do. Got to draw lands, but we got the 27 of them. But we need to draw two. To get us to secure this route. We need one in our first two draws. And then one more in the next draw after that. Perfect. So now one more in the next two. Basically we need two out of three cards to be land. Oh come on land. Let's hit it. Yeah. Let's go.
We'll get that thing out of here before we start massacre girling. Fay of Wishes instead of Borrower. Ugh. Wow, so punished for using that for using that casualties there. Wow. Could not be any more punished. Alright, do I want to draw four or a circuitous route and set this up for being an even bigger draw next turn? I'll probably circuitous route and set it up for being a bigger draw next turn. Yeah, like, Faye's a good blocker early, and this deck hat can get a lot of mana for Faye. Probably something better, though. I, honestly, I think I just want to play Questing Beasts. Questing Beasts is just a really strong card. Good on offense and defense. The 10 two-mana ramp spells that we have ramp into it perfectly on turn three. All right, good. Another casualties. I think I'm going to blow up Trail, Oven, Goose, and Forest. So that's good. Yeah, Questing Beast is an all-star. I think it would just be a, a more impactful card more of the time. <laughs> yeah, that is the problem with questing bees. You're just like, well, I could play like this other thing, but why don't we just play this busted card here? <laughs> hey, Radical Guru, good evening. Midnight Reaper continuing, continuing to be sneaky good. I don't even know if it's sneaky good. It's just pretty strong. I mean, I guess I kill Midnight Reaper, not Goose. With the casualties. More mana. This is exactly the game plan of our deck. 
This is basically a, a perfect hand. Turn two spiral, turn three route, turn four casualties. Um, then I guess I routed and then cast Gadwick. But yeah, like that's that's like the curve, and then we, you know we just got more mana, draw more, drew more cards, all that kind of stuff. Um. Corvold is trouble. All right, of course, that was the block I did not want them to make, but. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I, I know I could have played Paradise Druid and then Masker Girl and killed the Corvold. I went for the high upside play of that. That was basically the only thing that would have been bad for me is them blocking, making that block. Hey, Zin Zin. Thank you so much for that resub. Any plan for a new Vivian Arcbo deck? We we should make a new Vivian Arcbo deck, shouldn't we? Yeah, I think it's just time for a big crisis. Um, we could still die. So basically, how big do I want to make it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11. Let's do like... 8... Tap these things. I don't want these. Alright, that's fine. Uh, sorry to hear about that, Rex. Anyway, Zin Zin with that resub. There we go. I had to get my high boats in the chat. Got him in there. Yeah, the reason why I didn't tap down the Corvold on their turn with the Grow Spiral is because I wanted the extra land drop so I could play the Paradise Druid. And then, you know, we don't have to go to discard. And I get a Paradise Druid in play. But yeah, it does mean that if they would kill the Krasis, I wouldn't have a blocker for the Corvold. Ugh. Corvold gets to be a 9-9 now. Well, we have to chump with Krasis. Hey! Boot gifting out the sub to Z Sir Zapdos. That was obviously a rough turn for me. Come on, computer. I only need you to work for just a few more days now, computer. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, how can I... How do I kill this thing now? Is 
guess I need to go... So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, I could have done nine. All right, whatever. Probably should have just done one less and had two mana and been able to play a two mana spell, though. All right, so I got 20 cards left. We got 20 cards left. Kill them before we mill out. I wish we had just a little bit more exile in the deck. You know, a little bit more ways to like exile these cauldron familiars. for new data. The storied past holds our future. Land creature artifact. Eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fifteen still. How many cards do I have? I have nineteen. I could probably do ten. I mean that's that's not a very good auto tab. Seriously, they're just going to make me do this myself. Just leave green, just leave green mana and blue and black mana. How difficult is that? Just leave green mana. Oh. 
Behold nature's true power. Okay, so now we have plain white celebration at next turn, which basically if my opponent doesn't kill me here, I think we'll be winning if they don't kill me here and if they don't kill my planeswalkers. That's fine. Okay, so this can only get permanent cards back. Um... Basically, I want to proliferate once, and then I guess we'll just return one permanent, and then just kind of gain eight life. Just kind of have more life. Don't really need any of these permanents. I need you to give give me back my plain white celebration. Thank you. And now I'll have the plain white celebration get back Tamio, of course. No tail should be discarded. Alright, let's add a bunch of mana. Minus eight this thing. Life cannot be denied. Play a new one of these. I will aid you. And now my lands have indestructible. Harness the elements. Probably want another one. How much mana do I still have? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, sure. the ties that bind us all. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Um, it's one too much. All right, celebration. Return a permanent, triple proliferate. Give me back the Tamio. So the Tamiyo can get back the celebration. So we can just loop these. <clears throat> Man. I'm not one off anyway. All right. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately my case got delayed. I should have had everything by now. I should have been able to build a computer already, but the case got delayed, so we have to wait till we gotta wait one day. Or we gotta wait till Tuesday. So we gotta wait just a couple of days. Seven so nine cards. Two, four, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight, let's go seven. 
Six cards. Should be able to kill them next turn. We'll make a, another creature with a land with the Nissa. We'll play the new Nissa, make another creature a land, then we'll you know have Tamio get back the celebration. We'll proliferate a whole bunch. Make those things bigger. So get a bunch of huge indestructible lands. So that was game two. So yeah, we took out the borrowers. Glad I brought in the celebration. Celebration is just sweet. <laughs> Mediocre turns that deck. See if you want you want something else instead of Brazen Borrower, just play Plain White Celebration. That card's awesome. Alright, so they are Jund version with Corvold and Mayhem Devil. And obviously these Midnight Reapers could play Epic Downfall. Do some exile in. Some exile in and styling and profiling. Hmm. Ether Gust is probably decent too. But I don't really know what I want to take out. It'd be like Incubation Druid, I suppose. I think I want Incubation Druid on the draw. Obviously, we have the casualties that just get to blow up Corvolds. I think we just keep those. Hmm. Yeah, QQ. Yeah, it's it's definitely a star. Cause it was one that compute that QQ put in the command. But QQ said he's not gonna be here tonight because he's got a holiday company holiday party. Yeah, boot, that's my plan. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call you on Tuesday to to help me with it. Why no geese in our deck? Because we don't really take advantage of the, the food otherwise and so Geese would kind of be more of like a one-shot thing. Alright, well this is obviously worrisome. This questing beast hits hard. Yeah, I'm building the PC. Ooh, yeah, you should boot. Thanks, Kittles. I may just throw this celebration out just to gain 16 life. Just buy me some turns. I play 6-6 six, six, Crisis. Six, six, six. 
I gain three, so I go to 11. We're probably safe there with one card in hand. I don't like how I can't do anything else. If, if I do this first, we draw a land, I can, you know, gain 16 and play Paradise Druid. I can't really just play Paradise Druid and then Masker Girl to, to try to kill the Questing Beast because they would just sack one of their creatures in response. And then we wouldn't actually kill the Beast. Okay, don't let metal touch the motherboard. Okay, I'll have to figure out what the motherboard is. But I'll try to make sure that there's no metal touching the motherboard. That sounds like a good thing to avoid. Hmm. Our hand's pretty loaded at this point. I kind of can't just play like Krasis or Gadwick and draw tons of cards because we just have to discard a lot of cards. Oh, good auto tap again. Let's just go up to 21, get another Crisis. Plenty of life. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, how, how hard could it be to build a computer? It can't be that hard. Yeah, motherboard's the big square thing that everything else goes into. That makes sense. See, I already figured out what the motherboard was. We're almost there. Computer is basically built. We'll spend one more turn acquiring a mana, getting cards out of hand and acquiring mana. You can build a Lego, you can build a PC. Perfect. All right, what do we want to use to draw cards? So, Krasis, we could do like 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14. So, we could draw, we could do Krasis for 14. Draw 7. That's probably good. That's probably good. Still no casualties of war. Getting rid of one Masker Girl and a Growth Spiral. Probably the other Masker Girl. Yeah, I'll just get rid of those. All right, Midnight Reaper. You get to draw some more cards, lose some more life. 
They're at 12. This thing attacks for 14. So it turns out when they draw, draw eight lands, we do. We're in a better spot. I really feel like they should have attacked with that questing beast a long time ago and just traded with my 6 6 crisis, but I could be wrong. I feel like they could have done that. Like, if they would have done that, they would not have taken the 6 there and they would not be taking lethal here. Is it lethal? They get to gain 9 life? I guess it's not lethal. They can gain 9. Do, do. All right. Nisa. I protect that which cannot protect itself. More cards. So I was planning on like playing like Grow Spiral to tap that thing. This Legion ended. Oh, they needed to add mana with it. They definitely need to use it to add mana, and then, yeah, they did not. All right, two and one. We're going to play one more. We're going to go ahead and reset Arena, though, because it's been up for an hour, 30 minutes. No, I haven't tried mass manipulation in this. This is... Um, Luis Salvato's list from the Mythic Championship. Um, but yeah, Mass Manipulation could certainly do some work as well whenever you get to that, you know, those ridiculous amounts of mana that it can. But did you hear that I got a new router and um, modem today? I went to Best Buy, got a new router and modem instead of the, the two-in-one generic one that Cox Cable gave me two-plus years ago. So now, so got, so that's not going to be an issue. So now it's just the computer that's that's an issue. They have four Sphinx of... Okay. Two. Yeah, so that should help out for sure with our new with the new computer, too. So going all out. Trying to make it... Trying to make sure that we don't have any issues anymore. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure what ended up being the problem of why it took took so long, but I don't know, it was something on on their end, but on the cable company's end, but they got it figured out and and so we're all good to go. But yeah, it took me a while to get started today. Here goes nothing. Nothing. I don't know, I feel like it's something. <laughs> Whenever we crisis for more than four, the computer wants to explode. I'll protect you. With 
witness the ties that bind us all. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Basically, I don't want them to just like deafening. You know, obviously, I could have ticked up, untapped a land, had the land play incubation druid, but I don't really want them just a deafening clarion and kill my land and my druid, and I just lose out on that mana. They could haste a 5-drop, though. And kill Nyssa. So it's basically what do I want to play around. I don't really know. Even if my opponent has nothing else with them Sphinx of Foresighting. Gosh, it's just acting so bad. Can't wait. Alright, that's 15 in the air. How do we win? How are we supposed to be winning this matchup? Is this a Brazen Borrower matchup? Do I play 5-5 five, five Lovestruck Beast and hope they get to attack? It does seem that these mana creatures are going to get clarioned a lot and same with Nissa. I just I don't really like Nissa in this matchup. Really don't like Nissa against Clarion decks. I feel like maybe I'm supposed to take out Nissa or Paradise Druid. Maybe it's supposed to be the Brazen Borrowers. Again, like, like what is this really doing? You know, bouncing a Cavalier? We could bounce a Fires, I guess, but they just get to replay it. What does this card ever do? In this deck. Makes a lot more sense in decks like where the 3-1 body matters a lot. I don't know, I'm just taking it out. <laughs> All right, good hands. Yeah, yeah, Finale of Eternity could be worth it if we get to, you know, if we get to seven mana and then untap. The thing is, so many of their creatures have haste, but yeah, we could potentially take out a bunch of creatures. Yeah, Brazen's for the Counterspell decks. I guess this deck can't have Counterspells in it. That's fine. Come on, draw land. <laughs> Tilt. That's just going to make my uh, Casualties of War better. That's all that's going to do.
Okay. That worked out. That worked out pretty well. I'd have to say. Yep. I'd have to say that worked out pretty well. How come Spyglass wasn't used more as a counter to Oko while it was still legal? Because the it was for like a little bit, but the Oko decks had a lot of answers to Spyglass. Whether most of Oko decks were like Sultai playing Vraska Golgari Queen, they got rid of it right away. Um, even just the straight up Simic decks would have like, uh, and then the, the Sultai ones would have like that and Assassin's Trophy and other things like that. But then straight up Simic decks would have like Brazen Borrower that would bounce it and. Um, and try to counter it and and things like that and basically people people tried using spyglass for a little bit but the oko decks adapted and um had main they basically all had main deck answers and especially more in the sideboard too No land. I think they're supposed to need more lands than this. Could draw two with Gadwick. Or wait a turn, draw three. Yeah, you need to return need to run return to nature all the time. I guess they're just willing to go to discard. I could activate that castle, try to hit another land drop, but it's kinda risky. Cool, we just drew the land anyway. Puts me down to. Um. I'm I'm not getting the best use of like my card draw, but I I have too many cards in hand. We'll just play the five five. I could draw if I draw four with with Gadwick. I just have to go to discard. I'll just play this thing. Yeah, we're good. Okay, three and one. And we got our loss right away and then got to win three in a row. It's a good, <clears throat> good sequence for Rankin. So there's Sultai Ramp. Um... I liked a lot of what this deck had going on. Like I talked about, you know, while we were playing it, um, you know, I really like the ramp spells, love circuitous route, casualties of war was awesome. Krasis and Gadwick were awesome. The one thing that I just really, really didn't like was the brazen borrowers. I just don't like them basically at all. Um, so yeah, I would want to replace brazen borrower. That was definitely my least favorite card in the deck by a, a super long ways. Like it just, this, I didn't like this card at all. Um, cards that we talked about replacing, like Questing Beast, being another four drop. I kind of understand that, like this is something that you want to play like at least four mana. Kind of the same here. So like, if you take out Brazen Borrower, you're really looking at a curve that kind of looks like this, honestly, in your hand. Where if you don't have one of those first ten cards. Your hand looks pretty poor. This gave you like something else to do here. So I could see wanting to play something that costs two or three mana. If we take out Brazen Borrower, and, and maybe that's what 
was kind of like the best thing to be doing at two or three mana, but this card just was never good. I wouldn't mind, you know, I just wouldn't mind, uh, you know, just more, more like hard removal um, or counter magic, you know, kind of like some of these sideboard cards. I wouldn't mind a third Gadwick, but Questing Beast, talked about that one, could be awesome. I really like Questing Beast. Um, honestly, a main deck Plain White Celebration, I wouldn't mind this in the main deck either. I think the Plain White Celebration is good against basically everything. Um, I can understand, you know, how you, you maybe want cards that are good against Counterspell decks because our curve's, like, really high. So, like, maybe you want Shifting Ceratops instead of Questing Beast, but Questing Beast just plays such good offense and defense. Yeah, Murderous Rider could be an option. This deck doesn't play that... Like, we're kind of just barely splashing black. And you see, we just have our 10 black sources, so it's not like we're going to be able to have Murderous Rider available all the time right away, which is a, a problem. Um... That's kind of thing. Is like we're like blue black, and we're just kind of sp splashing casual seats of war up at the top end. So that's the problem with murderous rider. But murderous rider, if if they had the same mana cost, it would be a whole lot better than brazen borrower if they had the same mana cost. I don't think I like frilled mystic because everything else in the deck sorcery speed, and with that costing four. I think I'd probably just play some Questing Beasts to start with and try them out. Gadwick was just awesome, though. I really kind of think that the deck could use a third Gadwick. Gadwick was just awesome. Because even Gadwick for four or five mana... Um, it's still good there, you know? Like, play it for four or five. Draw one, draw two. It's awesome. But then, because obviously, like, whenever you have six mana, you're drawing three cards at six mana. That's awesome. And this deck can get to six mana very easily. You know, seven mana, you're drawing four. It's just, it's really good. Hey, Dank. So, yeah, that's that's basically the one thing that I didn't like was the Borrowers. Um, I'm not sure if Lovestruck Beast is, is that great for a four of in, like, the current metagame of, like... I understand, like, it's good against, like, the red aggro decks and stuff. Good against Gruul. That's a red aggro deck. But I'm not sure if there's enough of those around to really make Lovestruck Beast. Um, especially, like, when looking at the Mythic Championship decks. Um, I'm not sure if it's really that necessary over there. Celebration's awesome, though. Wouldn't mind another one of those in the main. But there we go. <clears throat> so that's um, that's some Sultai ramp. So those are some things to think about. Um, but yeah, very impressive deck with all the mana that it can gain and everything like that. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. And of course, leave comments. I would appreciate that too. Um, you know, Let me know what you think of the deck and uh, if you have any ideas for the Brazen Borrower slot um, or if you really like Brazen Borrower. Let me know in the comments if you think the Brazen Borrower is awesome and I'm wrong about it. Let me know. But that's it here for Soul Tie Ramp. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.